Welcome everyone to today's video. We are the Dimitrov Boulay Piano Duo. My name is Dimitri Dimitrov. And my name is Sofia Boulay. Recently, I had a lesson with one of my students and we talked about hand and exercises. And we were talking about what do you do when you don't have that much time to practice. When you have, for example, even like chunks of five minutes at different dispersed during the day. And he asked me if he could do just exercises like Hanan. Probably a lot of you are familiar with the exercises Hanan. They're very useful. They help you develop independence in your fingers. Mm -hmm. He wrote them so that you could train all five fingers equally. So in all the exercises you use all five fingers. In today's video, we could talk about hand and exercise, we could talk about a lot of different things, but we thought it would be very useful to talk about transposing them. So, like I said, in another video we'll get into how to practice them, how to play them, what would be useful to do, but today let's jump into transposing. Oh, and by the way, for those of you who don't know what transposing is, it is playing an exercise or a piece of music in a key that's written and then moving it into another key. So, for example, from C major, going to D major, or going to G major, or A major, doesn't matter, you just move into a different key signature. So let's take a look at the first exercise, and if you are interested in practicing these, it's good to know that they are progressive, so if you want to start somewhere, I would advise that you start at the beginning. Um, okay, so uh, all of the Hannon exercises are in a pattern, and they repeat uh, the Do same you pattern? really believe they will start at the beginning? If there's something like us... I would! I my, would! If my teacher tells me start at the beginning, I would open start like at the, end. the middle of the book. <laughs> No, but seriously, it's it, it's it's true. Better start at the beginning because otherwise... I would. They do get a bit tricky yeah. uh, later That's on. That's true. Yeah. Okay, so uh, pay attention to the fingering. That's the one thing I will add. Please, please play them with the correct fingering. The fingering is written, so don't deviate from that. And uh, study the pattern. So the first you get the exercise, and that repeats one tone higher. actually uh, goes to a certain point you can even choose to extend it an octave yeah, or to true. choose to do it one octave less and once you you get to the uh, final note which is the G which is the fifth note uh, you actually of do this of C major also of the C major yes yeah. um, you actually do the same thing uh, but backwards so um, <laughs> At the end. So I think that the, the main thing, the first thing to do if you want to transpose these, and you can transpose in different ways, but today we're going to talk about, I think, what is the most easy uh, thing to do, is study the pattern. So get familiar a little bit first in the C major, and once you are familiar with the exercise, study what pattern is going on, because it is one pattern that gets repeated every time a note higher. Um, so let's take a look. If you look at just the first bar, we play we start on the c of course it's in c major it starts on the c and then we skip a note and then you're playing all your five fingers just next to each other which are seconds that's how we call those intervals now if you do the same thing even if you don't look at the music if you do the same pattern on the next note you will skip one note remember to play it with the correct fingering and then you are going to play all the neighboring notes with your neighboring and then the same thing over and over. So that is what the pattern is. And once we know the pattern, that's when it gets easy to transpose. And the same goes, of course, with every other um, every other exercise in uh, from the Hannon book that you are going to do. Just study for us the patterns. That's that's very useful. So the first thing you need to ask yourself when you are going to transpose before you just start playing is how many sharps or flats will D major have? That's your first and most important question you need to answer. Um, D major has two sharps and so when you know that D major has two sharps it would be much easier for you to start with the exercise. So logically speaking from when you're in C major, you start on the note C. When you're in D major, you start on the note D. Just one key higher. And then you keep the same pattern. You want to have a third between in the first, when you start the exercise, right? You skip a note, so you have an interval third. And you know that you are going to have the F sharp. So instead of the F, you 
are going to place the F sharp. Then you move further with the exercise and you know that you have two sharps. The second sharp you're going to have is C sharp and so you're going to use C sharp instead of that would be wrong because you're not anymore and then when you climb one step higher you have to use the F sharp because we have F and C sharp here you're going to use the C sharp so logically speaking you have absolutely the same pattern but every time you come across the F and the C you're going to use sharps instead of natural keys and if you do this, if you start the exercise in D major, you will immediately actually notice what technical benefits this exercise has. For example, simply skipping a note from the C to the E is much easier than actually going with your fifth and your fourth finger here now on the F sharp. It's much more technically demanding, much, much more difficult. So you'll notice that actually if you do transpose these exercises, you'll see also the benefits they give you technically. Sometimes the exercises even feel a little bit awkward, but that's very good for you to start shifting across the different keys. That's, that's very useful than staying safe in the C major and everything feeling familiar. It's nice to use all the keys possible on the piano. So that would be a great, um, that would be a great exercise to do. Aside from all the technical benefits you're going to have, one of the great benefits of these transposing exercises is that you're going to start learning better the major keys and so that's I, I find that to be very useful because you know when you see a piece with two sharps and you're in a major key you're going to refer to these exercises what you studied and you'll be like oh I understand that I have two sharps the P sounds in major and so I'm most likely in D major right and so this would be something very useful. When you move across the different key signatures, you're going to learn much more about them. You learn how they sound. And so that's, that's one of the great benefits of transposing these hand and exercises. They are simple, the exercises. And so, of course, if you stick first to the simple ones, they're simple. And so in this way, you can explore very peacefully the different key signatures. And these exercises have multiple benefits. We already mentioned the technical benefits and the benefits of actually getting familiar with all the key, uh, major key signatures. Also, they actually really help train your ear. For example, if you are playing the pattern and it sounds in a certain way, if you accidentally skip a sharp, you'll notice that something is wrong because this it doesn't sound the same as, as the other exercise. So it's a great way of training your ears as well, which is, of course, very important in piano playing. I would say to those of you who would need more time with this, to take that time and not force yourself to do it really quickly. Some people would be faster and some people would be slower with this, but that, that's, that doesn't determine anything and doesn't mean anything. So if you need all the time in the world when you start in D major and think, what's the next key? Take that time. Don't play them sloppily and with all the wrong, because all the benefits that we mentioned mm. till now would be just gone out the window. You wouldn't a actually benefit in any way from these exercises if you rush and you do them all wrong. So I would say just take your time and enjoy learning the keys and learning the different patterns. So we hope that we've inspired you actually to maybe give these exercises a try. I think they are great warm up. I personally do them throughout all the keys uh, just at once without any break, which is also a great training of uh, finger endurance, technical endurance. And um, they're also great, as Dimitar mentioned in the beginning, if you only have five minutes or maximum 10 minutes, they're also a great way of keeping in shape and of course getting that brain to work. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so. We are on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. You can follow us anywhere you like. And uh, if you happen to transpose, if you happen to take, uh, give the exercises a try, let us know or send, send us your playing. Send us a link to your playing. We would love to hear from you. Yeah, because I think in the future it would be nice if we do some videos where you send us a little video and we comment on the video. So if some of you are interested in that, just send us a comment under. Um, for the rest, if you, if you have a topic that's important to you and you want to have that we make a video about it, just let us know. Thank you so much for watching this video for us. Recording it was a great pleasure and we'll see you next time. What technical benefits this exercise has because you'll see, that was correct, right?
you immediately discover what technical exercise what the benefits. <laughs> because once you start playing the pattern, you need to know. Oh my God, what the hell is that?